Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Anne and I are back today to make some cards for Christmas or for winter, for the winter holidays. And uh, so we have several things we're going to be doing. We'll be showing you how to use one uh, die and using it three ways. We'll be showing you a really cute die that you put together to make a little sled. Uh, we've just got several things that we're going to do. And we've got a bit of a a mess back here because we're getting things ready for <clears throat> Christmas and Hanukkah and New Year's and several different things. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And so, Anne, should we get started? Sure. Okay, let's do. Okay, to get ready for our card making project today, I'm going to pre-make several things that are a little bit fiddly and that... Um, kind of slows the process down. This is stuff that can be done ahead of time so that if you're working with uh, younger kids or kids that might have a limited time where they're able to create with you, this is a good way to get everything ready and not take a lot of time doing the fiddly stuff so that the kids can help you do the fun stuff. And so I'm going to show you two different things that I got at Hobby Lobby. I got this sled set and it comes with some ice skates and ribbon and stuff. And I'm going to show you that. And I got also this plate and I am going to show you three different ways to use this plate. Now, if you've seen my paper organization video, you know that I'm pretty careful about the dies and stamps that I buy. I want to buy ones that I'm going to be using over and over and over. So I'm going to show you three ways to use that plate that actually has been really handy. But we're going to start with the sled. And so one thing that I do is I'll get a piece of paper and I know if I've got to do a lot of die cutting, I just want to get it done all at once. So here are my tools that I use that I uh, think everybody, if you're doing die cutting, this would help. So I get just a piece of scratch, uh, scrap paper for your copier, and I will sort the pieces that I'm going to be die cutting based on the color that they need to be cut <clears throat> out of. And so I've already made some decisions about this. <clears throat> And so I can easily do the die cutting. So I know that these two pieces I'm cutting in brown. And then I have this tray. Uh, it's a three-part tray that I got at the dollar store. I think I have three of these. I actually could use several more. So here's my tray. And when, I've, when I'm finished cutting, several parts come out of that. And the ice skate pieces are all these... <clears throat> They're either white or gray, so those are here. And I just cut out as many as I can while I'm doing other things. I just do all of the die cutting at once. I've showed you in the past this little dish that I actually that was actually uh, at the Dollar Tree and had a stand on the back and how I uh, changed that. I'll I'll find that video and put it up in the corner. The link for this this handy little dish that I always keep at my desk because not everything would fit in the trays. So I went ahead and cut the sled and out of this, you get the part that goes, let me show you a finished sled. You get the, the sled plus this part. And so I just kept those all together. Now, another fun thing that comes out of that are just these thin little pieces. And I thought, you know, I'm not gonna throw those away because those would be really handy to use for straw, uh, like in a manger scene or something like that. So I'm going to keep those. And one of my favorite ways to store odd little pieces like that is in a glassine bag. And I'll link all of the products below. And I just keep them in there in these glassine bags. I like them because they're see-through, they're inexpensive, and I can reuse them over and over. And then see the trouble I'm having <laughs> picking those up. Another tool that I love when I'm doing a lot of die cutting is this little pen type thing. It's so handy. It's got one end where you can push things around or position them, but then it's got this rubber end and I have some of this wax that we use uh, when we do jewel art. And so I just get a little bit of wax into the little gap that's in the bottom of that pen. And I doubt, I doubt you can see that, but there's just a little well there. And then look how easily I can pick up those pieces. And I'm not always trying to 
scramble to get them to get all the little pieces up. So if you're doing a lot of die cutting where you have tiny pieces, that just is the best little tool and makes everything so easy. And then uh, when it it's not picking up very well again, then you just put your dip it again into the wax and get it in there. Okay, so those are just some ideas for making your die cutting a little bit easier and keeping things sorted. I really, when I saw this particular die, I was pretty excited about it because uh, it made me think of my childhood, actually, when we would go um, sledding quite a bit. And the area we would go sledding was called Pill Hill. And the reason was it was an area up, up near the mountain where I grew up that um, a lot of doctors lived. And so they called it Pill Hill, but it had a really, at that time, I felt like it was a super steep, scary sledding hill. Loved that. And so we would go up there and my dad was great about taking us up there on a Saturday to go sledding. And I loved it. Okay, so that's the basic sled. And of course, you can do any number of variations. Now, if you're doing a whole bunch of cards, it's easier to just make a plan and just do that plan and not not be trying to switch it around over and over uh, because that will that will actually save you time if you don't do a lot of shifting around if you're making a lot of cards. And this would be something you could pre-make or if you have kids that actually enjoy this type of thing, they could, uh, of course, help you design how you want these sleds to go together. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a few more and then uh, we'll be back. So once I have several sleds made, um, if I'm not making them all at the same time, uh, which I probably actually would do, uh, what I what I would do is get another glassing envelope and I'm going to put all the parts that go with the sled and that's going to include the bows. I'm going to go ahead and put those in, in one packet and I've got those little things in there that I want to use for a manger seam. And then I put all the greens in a different packet because I can use these greens all year long for other things and I'm always... Uh, doing cards where I'm looking for greens. This also shows me that this particular set includes some really nice greens. So if I'm going through, I can I can say, oh, okay, uh, this one has greens and I'm doing a summer thing and I can use that winter scene to create summer greens. Because I want to buy as few die sets uh, as I need. And so... You know, if I can use these all year long, that's great. So let's take a look at our uh, different arrangements of our sled. And actually, I do like the very basic one. This darker sled may actually be my favorite because it gives such a contrast to the skates. I have that part done. So I have an, another couple of things that I'm going to get ready. And then I'm going to have Ann come and start helping me put together some cards. So the other thing I want to use is this plate. And I liked it because I know I can use it for, you know, for cutting out a pretty design. And let me show you how this has come out. And I used actually just a patterned paper. So when that goes on the card, it just, aw just almost instantly creates this beautiful card. And I really like that. So that's one way. That's how the plate is intended to be used. But then I also did some cutting out and realized that I can use this very same plate and I don't have to buy a separate something in order to get just free flying snowflakes. So when you go to buy a... Um, a die set or a die plate, do that. Kind of look through it and say, how many different ways can I use that? So then I create this edge and some free flat, free standing snowflakes, and then I have a whole different card. So that's the second way to use that die plate. Okay, so let me show you one more way to use this. I've shown you in the past how I store pre-cut paper, and I just think that is so 
handy and such a great way to uh, make card making a little bit easier. So I'm going to take one of my pieces, it's a five and a half by four, and it already has some texture on it. In the drawer under my Big Shot, I keep my other plates. And one of the things I have in there is just this old beat up piece of heavy um, chipboard because it acts as a really great shim. So to emboss, I'm going to use my base and then a standard plate. And then I'm going to put down my embossing mat. It's a silicone embossing mat. And then I'm going to line this up on there because I want to just get a good embossing and I can trim this up if I need to. And then I'm going to put down my makeshift uh, shim and then I'm just running that through my big shot and I'm going to go back and forth so that I get a really nice impression. And then look at this. It's deep and it's it really is pretty impressive the way that impression has come out. And now what I'd like to do is create almost a metallic look. Now I've got one side that's sort of the uh, opposite side and then I've got the side that's raised and I want to use the raised side. And I have a product that I like to use and it's called Rub and Buff. And if you saw my Easter video, you saw me use this on wood. And so, but I'm gonna use it on a card. And I'm going to put a little bit of Rub and Buff on my glass plate here. And I like the glass because, you know, it's pretty forgiving. And then I want a piece of scrap card. I want to be able to take most of this off and this dries pretty quickly and I'm just going to get it all over my dauber and then I'm going to take most of it off like that and then I'm going to come back through on the raised side of this and just lightly go over the top of those snowflakes. I really like this rub and buff. It's kind of unusual and kind of fun. And I think there are probably several ways to go about doing this, but I have the rub and buff and I just kind of think it's cool. And so once you put that on, you get this kind of unusual metallic look. And this dries pretty quickly and with a, a damp wipe, it just comes right off of your glass mat. So I really like that. Okay, so let's get Anne in here and let's finish up these cards. So the first thing we're going to do is create a little bit of a subtle snowfall on this background. And so the, we have here, this is an anti-static powder and we're just gonna put it all over our card because we're going to do some embossing but we don't want the embossing powder, and then will you finish doing that on your card? We don't want the embossing powder to stick other than where we put dots. So now I'm gonna come in with a um, embossing pen. This is uh, like kind of like Versamark. This stays wet for a long time, and I'm just gonna put pa uh, dots all over my card like this and just make it look uneven and haphazard, which sometimes is very hard to do. Okay, that's good, Anne. And then just go into ahead and do your dots. And then I am going to come in with my white embossing powder and I'm just going to put it all over where I put those dots and then shake it off and then you end up with some snowfall like that. So I'm gonna set that to the side. Okay, we'll do Anne's next. Yours looks like it's kind of a blizzard, huh? Like the mm -hmm. snow is really going all over the place. So now we're going to bring in our embossing gun and we're going to go ahead and set those. Yeah, okay, you do yours. So you can see that's just a way that you can make a subtle snowstorm. 
All right. So we have two different snowstorms. And I like it because uh, even this, it, it makes it look like just a more of a, of a big wild snowstorm. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is put our snow bank on. And I just had some uh, Lawn Fawn, they're actually cloud edge die cuts. And I just used this big one to create our snow bank. And so we're going to use our Elmer's tape runner. Can I do it? And I'm going to go just along the bottom because well and a little maybe right there so go make sure you go light on okay. that like this yeah if you push too hard it doesn't work very well there we go okay and then once we have that down we'll turn it over and just trim those edges how's there. that Okay, let's see. Oh, good. You did that well, right along the bottom. So a, a slightly damp baby wipe will help to get that mm -hmm. embossing powder under control. Okay, did you want to trim your edges? Mm -hmm. Okay. So now that we have that, now we're ready to move on. I'm going to have Anne choose her the sled she wants to use. And then I'll oh, choose yeah. mine. So that's looking good. Okay, that's the sled you want to mm -hmm. use. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I will use, let's see. Yeah, okay, I think I'm going to use this one. We put a jewel on. Do I want to use the other one? You know what? I think I want to use that one. Okay, so next what we're going to do is just lay in there, and then we're going to go through and pick out our snowflakes. Okay. And this yeah. is kind of fun when we put them on. It's kind of fun to see... Let's see, I need some small that, ones. That's too big. No, it's not. No. I like that one. Maybe I like this one better, though. Do you want a big one? No. Okay, I think with I that background, know. I think I'm going to go with this, just like that. So, what we're going to do now is bring in my Xyron sticker maker. This is one of my favorite things. Okay. If you have watched my channel much, you have seen me use this. So we just slide something like that in. And this is so much easier because these snowflakes are really fine and delicate. And so it makes it really hard to put adhesive on there. But the Xyron just does it so easily. So we're going to drop and snowflakes in there. And then what we do is we just pull out the other end. Let's get sticky on all of your snowflakes. Sometimes you have to stop and just carefully make sure it's going through. Okay. Oh, do you want another one? Because let's try I'm to get... put it wet there. Okay. Do we want to get them through? I really like this Xyron. You can actually make stickers out of so many things with this. <laughs> I love and it's not very expensive. And of course, all of these things I will link below. Now I'm going to use my scraping tool and just <laughs> scrape that down to make sure the adhesive has stuck down to our snowflakes. Ready? I'll be at Yeah. And Thank then... You. We are going to carefully pull up this top paper. There we go. And then we have stickers that can just be carefully peeled up. And now the sticky is on there, and then we can place them wherever we want them. So go ahead and get your snowflakes on your card. And we're keeping our sled there so we can kind of have an idea of, of where we want our snowflakes to go. You eat a bit, boy? Yeah. Oh. All of those so are yours. yours. And sometimes with this, I'll even come back through with just a piece of printer paper. And push that down to to get, you know, if I've got something with fine detail and it gets some of the adhesive that's between, that's in these little gaps, it gets some of that off. And so now we've got snowflake stickers that we can just go ahead and stick down onto our card. 
So I just really like how that looks. Very nice, and Put it where everybody can see. Okay, and then the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and stick down our sled. And I'm not crazy about how I did this and left all of this stuff right here. So I'm going to go ahead and use a scrap and make another little bit of a snow mound and fix that. I'm just going to create... With you? Yeah. I'm just going to create I mean, I mean, a real subtle little double mound. See how I'm putting that in there? Just designed to cover that up. There we go. There. So I just created a second little mound of snow to cover up the sled that was kind of flying up in the sky because I didn't like how that looked. And now I'm going to just trim this off. And I think I even like that even better now because it creates a little added texture. So there's our first card done, and I really like how that looks. That's just a really fun card. Let's see, so there's Anne's all done and mine all done. I just, I really like those. We have a couple of others that we were experimenting on. All right, we're all done with that card. Uh, are you getting tired of card making or are you okay? Mm. What? I'm done. Okay. All right. Then I'm going to show you two other ways that you can use uh, this plate. All right. Now this one, because I can't run this through my tape runner, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm just checking to make sure I didn't miss any of the punch outs. Are you going to go make cards over by where you're sitting? Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm going to use my glue and I'm just going to go ahead and dot this around. Now, I don't know if you can tell that I've got this a little bit off. It's not as even along the edge as I like it. And so I'm just going to trim that just slightly with my paper cutter so that it lines up even better. So I took off just a sliver and that just cleaned up that edge beautifully. Okay, now I really like this, but I feel like uh, it needs a little something. So I'm going to go ahead and add a holiday sentiment on the front here, and then this card will be done. And then I'll show you the third way to use that die plate. And there is actually a very simple but beautiful card, uh, very easy. Now, let me show you one last way. And so, let's look at that. Now, this is a lighter blue, and I want to go with a dark blue. And I want to trim this down and just create a nice uh, little section of this. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and mat this. So here are some things I found at the dollar store, and they're sparkly papers, and I'm going to, ooh, that's pretty because it kind of picks up that same metallic look. And in fact, that's the one I think I want to use because I just really like that sparkle. I want to add some pizzazz. So I'm going to, oh, and it looks like this has an adhesive back. That's handy. Let me check. Yep. Adhesive back. Sweet. Okay. So I'm going to cut that down. So this, my card is five and a half by four and a quarter. So I'm going to cut this down to five and a quarter. Let's do it this way to save on paper. Five and a quarter by four. Okay, and then I can take that adhesive back off. I love things that have an adhesive back, and I often use adhesive back uh, on, on my chipboard and other things. Okay, and that's quite a bit. That's a little wild. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and put this on, and it just picks up that nice glimmer from that metallic look. And this I'm just going to go ahead and use my Elmer's tape runner. 
Now the Elmer's Tape Runner, I've mentioned before, it really sticks down. And if you get it wrong, uh, it stays. And so we've just got that pretty uh, metallic detail. It's, it's just pretty straightforward, pretty easy. And of course you can do even more embellishments, but what I wanted to just show you is you can take one die and just use it in a lot of different ways. So we took our snowflake die from Hobby Lobby and we made freestanding snowflakes that you can just put anywhere on a card. We did, we used it basically as it was designed to create a pattern and then just a simple sentiment. And then we also used it to emboss and then uh, use the rub and buff to bring out that metallic look. So I hope that that uh, gives you some ideas about how to look maybe differently at your dies so that you don't really need to be buying more and more because that can get to be an awful lot. And you can just make some beautiful cards that uh, are easy and fun and uh, you can do them that way over and over. I hope you liked these cards and I hope that you'll join me next time.